We talked about the bonus schedule. Great thing to add to your, to your product menu. Um, preview, we just talked about, and I will talk about that again. This is, uh, Preview is my sales presentation software, and it is something that I believe will change your sales. And it's another one of those overnight. If you can get your sales off offline line and meet with people in person, if you can make suggestions, add a bonus schedule so that you're adding on at the end in a very positive way, and using a presentation software like Preview that will allow you to design on the client's walls, all these things are gonna up your averages without really you having to do a whole lot different than what you're doing now. Yes, I want you guys to raise your prices, <laughs> but you, know, you start incorporating these tools so that you can do that in a very positive way with your client. When you change the way that you do things, they can't compare to how you used to do things. And it's, it's the way that I changed when I went to projection. And I used to, back in the day, in the film day, I would get, send off the, the film, get back proofs, and that's the way we presented them to the clients. And I sold my proofs. I would allow the clients to take their proofs home, and then they would come back to place their order, so I was still meeting with them in person, but they were spending, you know, four or five hundred dollars, I don't remember what it was, but it was, to me at the time, a lot of money to take those proofs home. If they decided to keep them, they were already paid for and they were theirs. And I think I even gave them a little bit of product credit if they kept them and then they could use the product credit towards, towards print. So when I was told, you have to go to projection, you have to get in front of your clients to sell. If you're gonna go digital, buy a projector. I did it all in one fell swoop and followed the rules. But when I did that, I was so nervous about losing that proof sale it freaked me out. That's like $400, $500 every single time. And when I went through this, the guy who I was kind of mentoring me at the time over this digital process, Gary Bach said, I promise you, if you will project, if you put those images in front of people, the size that they need to be shown, you're gonna make that money up. And I believed it, I drank the Kool-Aid, and I started projecting, and I did make that money. So. And one of the things that I, the tools that I used at the time was just my excitement. You know, when someone would call, they were used to getting proofs, that's the way they got them the last time. So when they would call and I'd book their session, I would tell them, you know, I've got this really exciting way to show you your images now. I'm so excited for you to come into the studio and, and view everything with me. I'm gonna be able to show you large on the wall so that you can see them actual size like you would see them in your living room. And I was excited about it, and that way I could book that appointment. I'm gonna book the appointment for you about a week after your session, bring you back into the studio to see everything. And because I was excited, I could get my clients excited about it to sit down with me. So anything that you're presenting new and differently, just explain it to your clients and how awesome this is, and they're gonna be one of the first people to experience it with you, and you're so excited to share it with them, and they're gonna, you know, they're gonna come along for the ride. They like you, and that's the reason they're calling. So preview's been um, something that has definitely changed our sales in the studio. It's allowed us to play interior designer with the clients. We really can get personally involved with them. It's also a great tool because it's pricing everything for you. So you enter your pricing in, you tell them if you're cost-based price, you just tell it what you want it marked up, and it's gonna automatically do it. When Wild Survey adds a new frame or they change their prices, it's automatically done in the system. And then I tell it, you know, my wild survey frames, I mark up times 2.2. And so if they change it and it goes up a dollar, it automatically changes my pricing in the system. I don't ever have to worry about it. So the days of, I mean, spreadsheets are what we used to have to go through to, to find pricing for frames. And, you know, if you don't go through all that ahead of time, then you're sitting with your client either wasting that time trying to figure out how much this costs and measuring inches and all these things with, with the framing, and or even with Wild Survey. I, I've used them for many, many years, but when I would place the order with the clients, we'd be changing colors and I'd be writing stuff down and I would forget you know, what they even chose and was that the last thing they chose or was this the last thing they chose and oh, I don't even remember what molding and you know, now I've got to figure out all the pricing. Well, now it's just all done, and it's just right there. So it makes it super simple for the studio, streamlines the process, and it makes it much better for the client. So um, again, preview has been super for the business, and I know you guys saw me fumble around in it yesterday, but uh, that was a matter of getting on somebody else's computer and not having all my settings downloaded. They'll help you do all that. Great customer service. 
And we've been talking about relationships for the last couple days and building relationships and really customizing the experiment, experience for your clients. Dale Carnegie said, you can close more business in two months by becoming interested in other people than you can in two years by trying to get people interested in your product. And you know, that is so key. And if you haven't heard of Simon Sinek, he has a video on TED Talks. And TED Talks is a, is a very uh, powerful platform on the internet and it's just short speeches that are done from industry, all different industry leaders. And Simon Sinek has a, a talk on there that is called um, People Don't Care What You, wh oh, now I lost it. Um, how, do you, how do you spell his last name? I can it's look S -I -N -E -K. it It's S-I-N-E-K. And it's a, uh, People don't care what you do, they care why you do it. And it's, a, it's a, the message throughout his talk and it's, you know, it's really something that has hit me in the head when I started listening to that. And you know, it's that message that really, you know, I mean, marketing in general, it all has to be about the other person. What you can fix for them, what you can do for them. Nobody cares about anything that, you know, that we've got to sell or that we've, you know, we're the best photographer in town, any of that. They want to know how we're going to enhance their lives. And so Is working. Is it the uh, how great leaders inspire action? Does that sound familiar? Mm-mm. OK. I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, well, and it might be part of that speech. I don't okay. know. OK. But the quote is, people don't care what you do. They care why you do it. Right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But thank you. But yes, it's, and it's S-I-N-E-K. Um, you know, doing business in this way, creating it around such a personal product and really making it so customized and personal for the client is allowing people to, to see the value and what's in it for them. And that's the only way to sell anything. That's the only way to sell anything. All objections that you get at any time just means the client needs more information. And so if it's first phone call, if it's consultation call, if it's the order appointment. If you're getting an objection, make sure you write it down and figure out how to get it into your system and into your workflow before you get to that point. That's something that, uh, you know, now sitting in the order appointment, whether it's an event, a regular session, whatever it is, we're not getting objections anymore because we're handling everything before it happens. So at, at an event, things are even a little bit more streamlined and that's something that you're gonna really enjoy about that process is you know, you've got to have, because you only have 30 minutes for a sale, you have to have those clients planned and prepared and really hold their hand up until that point because when you sit down with them, you've got 30 minutes, they've gotta be plugged into something and they have to be excited about it. What's in it for them? So make sure that you're handling all those objections, all those stalls, you know, anything that somebody, really it just means you haven't given me enough information to make this decision. So we've got to find those answers. And a lot of times it is something that we can actually put into our communication process before that time ever would come up. Or we lead them into a question that is going to diffuse it, you know, by, and just be proactive about it. And so I know a lot of people, you know, even internet world, you know, there are things that, you know, my clients always ask this. I always get to the sales room and this happens. You know, I, I have people at this time of the year that I'll say, Every single person who's coming right now, all they want is Christmas cards. They don't want to buy anything else. You know, if you've got that problem, be proactive. Put your holiday cards on a bonus schedule. Only allow them to be purchased with another purchase. You know, do, do something that you're actually, you know, avoiding that situation, whatever it is. And, and I'm willing to take some objections. If anybody wants to type in an objection, how would you handle this? We can talk about some of those things. Do any of you guys get something over and over that you want to chat about? Just recently, I mean, um, somebody asked me just about a basic hour session and I told them, told her my, my hour price and she was like, I can't swing it right now. And I'm thinking in my head right now, well, let me do, put you on a family day on a Saturday. I have two Saturdays available this year. Um, and I'm curious what your price, do you bring the prices down for that or is that an event? Oh, it, on those fam friends and family yeah. day? Yep. On the friends and family day, what my plan was, was to have pricing close to what my old pricing was mm -hmm. and still charge a session fee, right. but you're, you're kind of planning it like an event where you're photographing every 30 minutes or it's gonna be a mini session, it's mm -hmm. gonna be smaller, it's gonna be one outfit. 
So you still can accommodate those people, mm -hmm. and but you're not hurting your business. Right. Okay. So, but don't ever change your prices for someone. No. You know, give find an option and a solution for them. Mm -hmm. And if that option that you've created isn't right for them, then it's okay. Yeah. Sometimes it's okay. So, so that means we shouldn't have a friends and family discount, like on the product or anything like. Have a friends and family discount if that's something that you've pre-chosen. Okay. Don't make it up case by case basis. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. And also that. make it be on your schedule. Don't okay. let those people take either client time or family time away from you. Okay. Predetermine the time that you're going to allow that to happen. Lori, we do have okay. some things coming in from the <laughs> internet, of course. And just a clarification from Sophie Dog that you mentioned payment plans. How do you implement this so that do clients receive the photos before or after the full payment? Everything is paid for before they get anything. We do require at least half down to begin the order. They don't have to, if somebody's on a payment plan, I'm gonna help somebody, and, and it's a small percentage of people that actually do a payment plan. But if they need a payment plan, they know that once half is, is placed, then we will start the order. And they will get the, you know, once it's paid off, they will get their order. So even with our regular clients, people that are paying in full at events, we're telling them it's half down, and then half when the order's ready. And you know, and it's great too if you can get it all at, up front and at, at once. That's super. It's back in the day when I started the policy of half and half. I was in that cash flow place where I needed that half down to pay for orders and you know get this stuff done. And if I would have had the other half, it would have been gone. It would have been spent before, <laughs> um, you know. And so, but because I started that way and it's always worked, we've just we've kept. Um, putting into, into practice. Um, I have seen people do a discount if you pay in full the day of the order. That's great too. Um, and again, that's a personal thing. In my mind, that's that one step for me that feels a little pushy. Well, if you pay today, you know, pay in cash right now, <laughs> you get a discount. And that to me is that, that one over the line. But for somebody else, that's gonna be the right move. So, um, you know, it's all, it's all based on your personality and what feels right to you. Can we go through more objections? Yeah, sure. We're getting a lot. Let's in. do it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Ginny Lee Photogs um, from Wyoming says, I already have frames. I just need prints. You know, and, and that's okay. Um, we want to help you fill those frames. But what we specialize in is creating something custom for your home. So I would love the opportunity to be able to, de to design something for you. So if you'll just walk through the house in any place you would consider hanging portraits, just snap a picture of that, those walls and I'll put something together for you. So I'm giving her the yes answer and telling her, absolutely, we would love to fill those frames for you. But here's our specialty and let me do this as well. So W. Anderson says, uh, who's from South Dakota, says, do you offer print releases? The question that I get all the time is, will I get a release for this session so that I can print at Walmart or Target? <laughs> Um, we do have two digital options, and the digital packages are 10 images for 2,000 or 30 images for 3,000. Those are available on our bonus schedule, so I can show you how you're going to get, you can earn up to 50% off of that. And that is, again, once they spend $2,500, they're at the 50% off bonus level, and so they can get 50% off of those digital files, but that's the only way they can get a print release. It is a yes answer, but it's also a yes for my business. Okay, another one. Um, Adrian Farr has said, I have spent a lot of money with you before. Can I have a discount? <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's something that, you know, you might want to turn that person into a referral uh, friend. So you let her know, you know what, I, I love that you've been using me for so long or you've, you know, you've been, you love me, whatever. Um, you know, anytime you refer a friend to the business, I'm going to give you $50 in portrait credit. And so you can stack those up, you can use them however you want and, you know, send me 10 friends and you've got, you know, $500 to spend. And so that's a great way to turn one of those people into a, you know, not only keep coming to you and feel like they're being rewarded for it, but also bring you new business. So I'm not sure if we're role playing here or if this is a question for you <laughs> from uh, Dauber Art Photo who says, do you accept credit cards? Do you pass through the processing fee? to the client, 
And so does anybody ever ask you that as well, if you do accept them, if they're I the always, fees? yes. I mean, I highly, highly recommend that you accept credit cards. Right now with Square, mm -hmm. if you haven't been to squareup.com, make sure that you go because any one of us today can open up an account and start accepting credit cards. Makes it so, so easy and the, the prices, the percentages are very good. I know, I mean, I've used my credit card company for years and years and so I'm not gonna change, I've got a good rate with them, but I do use Square when I'm on the road and um, I use Square for Don No More don do donations, we use it for a lot of things and it's, it's awesome. Definitely accept it. I do not charge an additional fee for someone using a credit card. We absorb that cost. However, I am pricing with that variable already included. So, so the person that does pay cash or check or debit card or whatever, then we've got that little bit of extra profit in there. But I'm not gonna charge somebody on the backside. They're gonna spend more money if they're using a credit card. So we definitely want them to do that. Also, in some states, it's illegal to charge extra for credit card uh, usage, so you might want to make sure you check that out as well. And that's squareup.com? Mm hmm There you go. Thanks. Squareup.com. All right. Thanks. I All right. Keep going. Okay. Well, we're going to shift to pricing now. <laughs> okay. <coughs> All right told you guys earlier, bare minimum, bare minimum that we should consider working for is a cost-based pricing method. So we're going to look at this. Um, the recommended cost of sale uh, per item, per dollar, is going to be 25 to 35 percent. And your cost of sale is going to include your media, which means your camera cards, your hard drives, that kind of thing, which is, that's a really hard thing for us to wrap our minds around. It's a hard thing for us to want to put into our pricing. But that's, that should be included. Your retouching time, the print finishing, that mounting, texturing, luster coating needs to go in there. The production of it, so whether it's the um, me shooting, the Stacy retouching, Kim packaging, you know, whatever it is, all of that needs to be included, that time. Contract work that you're sending out, uh, for instance, we use PWD labs a lot for retouching. And that's one thing with, with the events. If you want to have, you know, like for you, Laura, you don't want to touch Photoshop. And so you could go shoot an event, just send all your files that have been ordered out to PWD. They're going to finish them off for you and get them back to you ready to go to nice. the lab. So that's about 375 an image to have it finished, which you build that into your cost of sale. That's an easy thing to do if you're going to do that. Um, contract work could also include if you're hiring somebody to come and be an assistant on a shoot, hiring somebody to come and shoot video, whatever it is, that's going to be part of your cost. Frames, any packaging that, that goes into finishing it and delivering it, any sales commission that you're paying to your salespeople, if you have them, those credit card fees are going to go in there, that's part of that cost base cost of sale, um, and then any online hosting, if you're using SmugMug or anything like that, those fees should be associated and, and plugged into your cost of sale. So all of that together should equal, come to about 25 to 35% cost of sale. Obviously, if we can go to the 25% side or lower, we're going to be profiting more. Does that make sense? So to get to that 25%, we're going to look at the price of an 8x10. And I don't want to scare any of you, but <laughs> again, cost of sale is the base minimum you should consider working for. Your print, an 8x10, is going to cost about $2.20. To mount it, it's going to cost about another $4. Texture, 30 cents. That luster coating is usually pretty cheap too. I don't even have that in there, but let's say we add another, you know, 50 cents a dollar. I don't even know. Um, your packaging is going to be 2 to $5. And that's going to be putting it in a box, adding tissue, bag, bow, sticker, thank you card. As you raise your prices, you're going to want your pack packaging to feel more and more luxurious because as they're spending money, we all know as the consumer how it feels when we walk out of certain stores with certain bags and certain packaging. You know, we want our clients to feel that same way, that they really invested well and they've got, got a lot of value <clears throat> here. I always like to think about when you do those Christmas parties where it's the steel game, you know, Kristen goes, she draws the number, and she gets to go pick a gift. And I come next, and I can either steal hers, or I can go get a new gift. Well, guess what package we all want? 
pretty much. It doesn't matter what's inside. We're fighting over the packaging, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so think about that when you're packaging for your clients. Um, and then we have to consider production wage. Now, 375 is the outsource cost. That's about what it's going to cost when I send it to PWD. So at minimum, I've got to include that in there. If I'm doing it, I better be making more than that. Okay, so again, this is base minimum. If you're looking for you, let's say you want to make $20 an hour. I want all of you to make a lot more than that. <laughs> <laughs> but let's say you, you want to make $20 an hour and you've got 30 minutes in this 8x10. That's going to mean shooting it, editing it, showing it to the client, ordering it, packaging it. Let's say 30 minutes. That means you need to make $10, right? So that's going to, that 375 is going to go up to $10 if we're looking at pr production wage. Whether you're doing it, you've got staff doing it, whatever. This is going um, outsourcing. So I'm going to show you at bare minimum, we've got $13.25 in this equation. That's with all this at the rock bottom of this curve, okay? For a 25% cost of sale, we've got to multiply this times four. That's going to get us to 25% cost of sale. That means $53 should be your minimum that you are willing to let an 8x10 go out of your studio for. And that's scary. That's a scary thing when you start thinking about it. But if you can think about it in black and white like this, it starts making sense and you go, I'm not making any money. I got to raise my prices, you know? Um, <clears throat> and, and the thing is, is these days is it's hard to charge $50 for an 8x10. And that's why we've got to come up with product that is not about that eight by 10 piece of paper, or even the beautifully mounted, textured, and, and luster coated piece of paper. You know, it's, it can't be about this. It's very hard for me to sell this for the $150 that's on my menu. We do, but that's because we're including other, other products with it. Um, all right, so does that freak anybody out? <laughs> you getting there, we coming along with me? <laughs> yes. We need can it. You, can you explain again what uh, production wage means? <clears throat> production me wage means it, anything that it takes to produce the final print. And so with that 375 that I've got in there, that really is rock bottom, that's sending it out to outsource it. And I always want to make sure that's included because a lot of times we're saying, well, I'm doing it myself, so I'm not going to include that in there. That means I'm not paying myself. It also means that if something happens to me and I can't get that order out and I have to outsource it, I haven't priced for that profit. So we've got to at least consider that rock bottom. If all else fails and there is, you know, if I am incapable of doing this tomorrow and I need to outsource it, I've got to have that plugged into my my pricing. Yes, Janice. Do, do you outsource most of your work? I'm just curious. Do I you don't outsource, outsource more of, most of it, but we do outsource jobs. Like right now, Stacy just had a baby, so okay. stuff is going to be going to PWD. And so PWD is who you use? Yes, PWD. PWD. And I think we've got a price for them from them at some point too. But, um, but they, uh, they do a great job and they, what they do is they are going to let you send a test job and they're going to customize it to you. They'll send back for instance, for me, the first time I worked with them, they sent me like six or eight variations of black and white okay. and sent it back to me and said, you choose your look. Um, also, even with hand painting, you know, that's something that, I mean, that was a big deal for me to outsource that. Um, but they can do it if I need them to. Same thing, they sent me back like six, eight versions of it and said, kind of choose your look. They're gonna do it for color saturation. They're gonna do it for grunge. They're gonna do it for all those different things. And um, and of course, that varies a little bit depending on what all you're having done to it. They'll also even take your whole entire session and cull it for you. And you know, if I send them a senior session and tell them I need this down to 80 images, get it down to the 80 best, get it back to me, they'll do that. You know, so there's a lot of different things on the on the finish to the lab sort of retouch. It's it's about three. Three hundred, three dollars and seventy-five cents. So that's Thank what you. that production is. Thank you. We have a couple more questions okay. here, if that's all right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Say, cheese would like to know: Isn't the production in the sitting fee, not in the eight by ten? Your your session fee is completely separate. And so, yes, you know, there are certain ways to to figure all that where you're averaging out uh, part of the session fee. I like to think about that separate because there's a lot of times when maybe you're doing free sessions for a certain event and you need to 
you need to have, you still have to have your prices based on that cost-based pricing, bare minimum. There might be, um, you know, there's just so many, so many variables to the session fee. That really should be considered your, your time for going to, to do that session, in my opinion. <laughs> okay, one more on this uh, from Beauty of the Lake in St. Pete, Florida. With this eight by 10 example, do they get a discount if they order multiples in the same size of the same print <coughs> since you already did the work and just have to click add one to the cart? Um, that's a great option. I don't have that option. We do have gift print collections on our, in our events uh, schedule and I'll show that to you guys in a little bit, but they can do five, eight or 12 prints and it and it's goes uh, like one pose, three poses, five poses. So like giving them that discount for <clears throat> buying from the same image. It's great. I think um, one, of the, one of the things that, the reasons that it hasn't worked for me is that I really don't like seeing um, you know, your first eight by 10 is this much, your second one is this much, because to me that, that lessens the value of the first one. <coughs> Ernie, go. <laughs> Save her from the cough. Um, 1325 times four, the four. Could you just, maybe I wasn't um, listening. Could times you four, you're a boy, you should get this figured out. <laughs> 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 I got it. I'm the girl. He's the boy. He did to, it. To get to that 25% cost of sale, yes, is going to be a fourth. Okay. Of your dollar. Okay. So it's called a score. quarter. Remember the math and the fraction. Bring it. But bring it. But on. He's, he's a just, chef. Uh, <laughs> hey, you have to measure. But to your point, Ernie, can you maybe just say again why 25%? Well, 25 to 35% is kind of that um, what we want to reach for. So when you're figuring out your um, your numbers at the end of the week, at the end of the month, at the end of the year. You want your cost of sale to fall in that 25 to 35% range to be profitable. And so, so that's why. And 25% is that sweet spot. Obviously, if you can get it lower, my cost of sale usually ends up about 18%, which is really, it's low. But part of that is where, where I'm priced also. So 25% is a great place to, <coughs> to reach Target. for, to start in, um, <clears throat> so that $53, that's where that comes from, which is, How did you lower your scary. cost of sale? Like, how did you get it down to 18%? Well, raising your prices is gonna okay. make the cost of sale lower. Okay. Does that make your percentage lower? Does that make sense? I think so. <coughs> uh, how, not really. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Go there. No, let's okay. go there. Let's make sure everyone understands. I wanna go there. <laughs> <laughs> Can we go there? <coughs> well, let's say, let's say our cost is $13.25. Um, if I'm charging $100 for that product, that cost of sale percentage is going to drop. Right, because the, that's a constant number, the 13 Right, if I'm charging 53, I'm at 25% cost of right. sale. Okay, I see. If I'm charging see, 100, it's gonna be a okay. lesser percentage. Got it. Does that make sense? Got it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if somebody here is asking it, somebody I'm on the is asking absolutely. it too. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Um, and that's one thing that I love the questions because that is so true. If somebody is asking, there are a lot of people wondering that no, that won't ask. <laughs> so that's good. All right. So when you when you start looking at numbers and one thing that I want you guys to all think about is, you know, really, what do I need to make in a year? You know, um, that's one thing with the with the portrait events. When I started adding those into our business, you know, it's, it's that guaranteed, if there's a system in place, which makes it a guarantee. So with that system in place, I know I can add an additional $10,000 a month by doing these events. So that's what I want you guys to do. I want you to sit and think about, you know, I need to, I need to gross this much, which means I'm going to profit this much. This is how I'm going to make it happen and put a plan, plan in place to do that. <clears throat> you can do 50 sales at $500 and 50 sales for a lot of photographers, 50 sessions is a lot to do in a year. And if you're averaging $500, that's a $25,000 gross. $25,000 is poverty level yes. in the US. <laughs> and that, you know, it's again, it's scary to look at in black and white because especially when you're starting and you're, you know, you're so excited when you make $500 and you think I just made so much money. 
But when you look at the work involved and the, you know, the drain on our lives and our families, you know, there's, there's just no option at the end of the day when you really start thinking about it. I have to be priced for profit. I have to make this work. I have to raise my sales averages. I have to make money or I cannot do this. I can't do it to my family. I've just underlined, I've just written down poverty and underlined it. <laughs> True story. So when you, when you look at raising your average, doubling it to a thousand, and you're, you put in those hundred sales, which means 10 portrait, portrait events with 10 clients, you're, you hit that hundred thousand dollar and Mark, that is, that's, that's like ding, ding, ding for lots of photographers. Like that's that sweet spot that they, they really strive to get to. So that's why portrait events are so powerful because it literally is 10 events. When you look at putting it in place and doing all those right things, leading your client along, planning, preparing at every stage, creating the right products for them, you're looking at a, a decent salary, <laughs> you know? Kind of makes a difference. Gross. We always have to also remember it is that, that gross. is gross. It's gross. So that's still, that's looking at, I mean, usually we're typically profiting about 30 to, you know, 40% um, of our gross. And so it's still, it's still not a lot of money no. at the end of the day. No. You know, we work hard. <laughs> oh, it's exhausting. And, and the ma it. majority of us completely devalue what we do. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's just facts. All right. So there is a couple of pricing models and the first is a la carte, and you guys all know that what that is. That's just selling everything individually, no packages are put together, everything's done on a you know, per product <coughs> item or per product sale. And, and that's, a, that's fine, that's a great way to, to price. Um, it takes a long time for a lot of people to be comfortable with that, to just have an a la carte menu with no packages, but uh, a la carte is, is great. 